Hey guys, what's up? It's your buddy Keith, and I am back here live in the control room at Essex Recording Studios just outside London in Southend-on-Sea, England, baby. We've got a lot going on, a lot of new stuff to show you. Got some new signs, even. Yes, very exciting stuff. And uh, we've got a crazy, crazy rare Ibanez guitar here with monster history that friend of the channel, Ryan X, you'll see him in the comments all the time. He brought this over to us, gave me the whole history, whole lowdown on it. It's incredible, guys. You're going to learn a lot. This is an Ibanez Mac 10. If you are new to the channel, hit that like button, hit subscribe, come join our circle of friends. You're going to see some of the coolest, rarest guitars that I find from all around the world. You get a little bit of an education. You uh, get to drool over some very sexy guitars. And if you want to buy them, they are for sale on our website. Yes, EssexRecordingStudios.com. It's powered by Shopify. I will send you your guitar anywhere in the world, guys. It's great. Also, you can go to Reverb.com and type in Ibanez Mac 10. You will see this there as well. All right. So let's chat about this guitar that Ryan was so kind to bring in for us. Well, this is one of 440 ever, ever Mac 10s. This is McAfee, Mario McAfee design. Uh, most people think Mac 10, they think of a automatic uh, submachine gun pistol, but no, this is um, one of the, the most famous at not the one of the most it's the most famous gypsy jazz guitar design from the most influential and famous gypsy jazz guitar luthier mario mcafeary his background is insane guys it goes way beyond guitars so born in italy he became a luthier i think his education started at 12 he was a master uh gypsy jazz guitarist and um played until he injured his right hand in a pool accident poor guy and that put the kibosh on his music career aspirations but it did not put the kibosh on his musical instrument manufacturing aspirations and also he was an inventor and innovator in plastics so he is the guy that made laminate bodies a thing he was the pioneer in laminate bodies all the way back in the 30s also he uh, he invented the plastic uh shower tiles and kitchen tiles and even more crazy this is something you'll definitely be familiar with uh plastic reeds for for wood instruments but not only that the plastic ukulele so that they i think they said they sold nine million of them globally when he invented it, it was the islander uke islander ukulele made out of all plastic. He's the guy that invented it. You know, when you go play a Hello Kitty little plastic ukulele, you can thank Mario McAfee, guys. So, going back to this guitar, what, what made this guitar famous is its D-shaped sound hole, which has now been copied, because not even because of the original, but because of the reissue. This Ibanez reissue actually made it um, super popular, and now you see some of the biggest acoustic companies in the world uh, copying this design. But um, as we have a little read in here, made by Ibanez Japan under the 1931 specifications, updated in 1979 by Mario McAfee. This is number 50 of 440, and it's signed by him. That is his signature. Yes. Uh, reading this, there's some sort of wood resonator, apparently, that's also underneath the body. And it just gives it, between that and the shape of the sound hole, a very bassy, very resonant tone. So let's just have a little strum a right here. Very resonant. Still going. Hear the nice little notifications on my phone as well. You turn this off. Uh, also very cool. What a distinct and unique fretboard that kind of extends over the sound hole 
and gives you an extra four frets on the last two strings. How interesting is that? Beautiful tailpiece with ornamentation. And if you look at the tuning pegs, again, lots of ornamentation and uh, pearloid, kind of mother of pearlish tuning uh, buttons. Wood truss rod cover. Now let's talk about how this guitar came into existence because that's also a very exciting story. Um, there's a there was a huge import company, import export company called Summerfields here in the UK. Um, it was formed, I think, in the early 1900s. And the son, who joined the company in the 20s, was an avid jazz guitarist. Huge fan of the Gypsy Jazz movement. Huge fan of Mario McAfee. They were the largest toy importer-exporter. But they, I mean, they, they did everything, this company, Summerfields. And they existed all the way up until, I think, 20... 18 is when it uh, dissolved, when the, the, the last owners retired. But um, what happened was, is, is the son from the original founder was a huge fan, and he wanted to bring back this design. He had two of the original 1931 models, which go for huge, huge money. I mean, tens of thousands of dollars, guys. Tens of thousands of pounds, euros, dollars. Big, big, big bucks. And... He loved them and wanted to bring it back. And so he did. He actually he had a relationship with Ibanez. They were the exclusive uh, importer for the UK of Ibanez guitars. Also, Diodario's strings and CF Martin strings, interestingly enough. So they had a great relationship with Ibanez. Um, he's the reason why the Joe Pass model exists. This British company really um, just had the most amazing relationship with Ibanez. And had a huge influence on everything that was built by the company and released outside of Japan during the 70s and 80s. Um, I, think, I think his exclusive distribution contract in the UK went all the way into the 90s, if I'm not mistaken. It was qu quite, some long, quite a long time. So, yes, let me just put this over here. Keep talking about the, uh, the history. Great looking guitar. So, um, he was this huge, huge fan. And so he made a line of guitars that were called, if I'm, try, I'm trying to remember now, I think it's uh, uh, CLS, I think it was, it was called. It was named after him. And um, I think it was his initials with Summerfields. And so he made the line of uh, replicas after sending his best original off to the um oh i can never say it was like hoshi gakin the 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 company behind Ibanez, the behind that brand he sent his two best models out there and they made a replica well he wanted to know if mario mcafeary was still alive and paid his lawyers to go do a global search to see if they could find him and they couldn't they looked for three months. They came back to him and said, there's no sign of the guy. So he made uh, the, the, the Summerfield model. And uh, after that, I'm trying to think of, I'm just trying to remember everything in my head from, from reading the two different articles. But I think it was around 1975 that he like miraculously out of nowhere got a letter in the post from Mario McAfee saying like, hey, I've heard you've been interested in my guitars. I've seen you, you've made some copies. I'd love to get in on it. And at that time, McAfee was living in America. He was living in New York. So he had done a plastic clothing pin company, huge plastics company and huge plastic reed manufacturing company for woodwind instruments. So they discover each other in 75 the, uh, there's, there's a meeting across the pond that takes place. And by 1979, they've agreed to, with Ibanez, create the updated, improved reissue from the 1931 model. These are all signed by him as well. That's the only instrument I know of 
signed by Mario McAfee, who invented the plastic ukulele and is responsible for millions and millions of instruments being sold and played around the world, guys. Huge, huge history. Um, yeah, so he was still alive. He got all, he got completely involved in this project, gave it his blessing, and now what you see here is this beautiful instrument with mahogany neck. It's got Indian rosewood back and sides, and you can see it's got a uh, beautiful Sitka top. The It appears, what it says is it's a book-matched uh, Sitka top, and what's interesting is it looks, the way they manufactured it is actually a large piece here, book-matched book uh, horizontally rather than vertically. Very, very interesting. But Beautiful nonetheless. On the back, you can see a little bit of some like clouding that's in the lacquer. It's, and in my mind, what it's from is it's from uh, air getting under uh, the, the laminate. That's what it looks like. How you can get that out and resolve the, you know, there's no sound issue or anything. It just, if the light gets it right, you can see a little bit of uh, kind of like, cloudiness to, to the to the laminate um but yeah I've, i'm not a luthier i don't know it's just something that uh you'll notice if you get it under the right angle but man what a beautiful looking guitar look look at the depth of that rosewood guys that is just stunning what a looker you can tell ibanez took a lot of time care and attention to this real interesting um volute area here actually if i think of my american-made washburn dimebag daryl signature guitars his had that same kind of a uh, little pyramid bump where the headstock beats the neck but you also have a is, it, is there also a scarf joint just looking here under the light no i guess that's that's it's really interesting how they do it there very unique i, I don't think i've ever seen that before Maybe it's something that's more common on older instruments. Again, this is a 1931 design. Looks like an ebony fretboard with uh, pearl dot inlays. Yeah, gorgeous, guys. Very unique guitar with a crazy history. I encourage all of you to go... Google Mario McAfee, read up his uh, Wikipedia article, prolific inventor, an amazing career. I think the guy lived to be 93 years old. Uh, what a life. Born in Italy, died in New York, and uh, his daughter still runs the plastics company. I think they're called like French French Plastics something or another. You'll have to read it on the, on the Wikipedia. But um, not something... I expected, you know, getting a phone call from Ryan saying, hey, man, I got a Mac 10 I want to bring in. You want to see it? Uh, you know, I was like, man, am I back in, a, am I back in Florida? I don't, I don't think we're allowed to have Mac 10s over here. Yes, yeah, so this was the pleasant surprise that I got. Very, very cool. Very excited to get this up on our website and on Reverb for you all. And I imagine, you know, whether you're a Gypsy Jazz enthusiast, an acoustic enthusiast, or an Ibanez fanatic, either of those categories, this belongs in your collection. Um, one of the coolest Ibanez guitars with the most insane history that I've ever, uh, yeah, ever seen. Very good education. And thank you to our good friend Ryan for uh, bringing this in because if he hadn't called me up, I would have probably gone my whole life not knowing about this guitar. There you go. All right, guys, uh, follow us on all the socials. It's at Essex Recording Studios. Um, that's on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. We're all there. And stay tuned because we've got more guitars coming up. We've got loads of stuff. I've really falling behind on the videos, but don't you worry. Plenty more to come. If you're looking for cool acoustic guitars, just have a look at the rest of the channel. We've got loads of cool acoustics. If you want to see other Ibanez guitars, we've got loads of cool Ibanezes. So we've got something for everybody. Awesome. On music news, we've just had... Matt Terry in the studio, he won X Factor in 1996, or 1996, 2016, a little different there, 
I don't even know if he's live in 96. His, uh, his voice is, was insane, man. Absolutely stellar voice. We're real excited to do some new music with him. And uh, we're working with Charlotte Aubrey at the moment as well. You've seen her on Ellen. Her voice is incredible. And we got some really cool Rocky bits coming out as well. That's top secret. So, yeah. Follow us on the socials. You'll see all the cool news about what we got going on. All right, guys. I'll catch you all later. Bye.